Hello YouTube and welcome to episode 13 plus extras slash OVAs in my Symphony Gear G reaction series. Glad to be here today. Going to finish off Symphony Gear G, the second season of Symphony Gear. Uh, I probably should have watched this episode last week, by the way. Like, um, it's not going to be very exciting this week. Sorry, it's kind of just the end. I don't know. In the future, if they continue to do this kind of three episode climax, like structure i guess you would call it i'm probably just going to try to watch through and potentially delay the video because of that i think that's just better either way on with the comments summary today and yeah this is, there's a lot of comments here uh i got a lot of stuff wrong last week and i'll get into it a little bit and the corrections in that regard so if i miss stuff or misinterpret stuff then that's only natural it just happens and i need to accept that as well because um yeah i did miss some things but it's okay Either way, the first comment here is about the concerts. There was some amount of pushback about me reacting to the concerts on the channel. So Shinsasu, Ray Shadow, Newt, Hibiki Tachibana, hello Hibiki, and uh, Seraph Armoros all had comments on that, kind of in favor of me watching the concerts on the channel. Apparently there's even some stuff that gets referenced later that's in the concerts. But I think I'm going to go with CKOD's suggestion, which is, hey... I'm going to watch all the concerts once I'm done. That way I'll be craving some Symphony gear. That way I'll be, you know, privy to everything that's going on in the anime. I won't get any weird spoilerish stuff. I don't think there would be any, but anyway. And whether that is me just watching it by myself and recording my thoughts after or me reacting to it is up to my interpretation. I may even do a Discord event thing. Just get a bunch of us in a channel and start watching it. Sounds good too. So yeah, concerts will be watched but probably at the end of the series. That's what I'm thinking. If there's anything that's super relevant to something that's going on, I'm sure you guys will fill me in. Next, Bamp says that Ogawa is just cool and has always been cool. So if you think back to season one, there was a lot of moments that were just kind of not explained about him being a secret badass. And now he's more of a actual badass in the show based on content, which is a good change, I think. I, I like to see this expanded even further. I want to see him become straight up busted i want to see him become like a like crazy good you know what i mean like do some stunts that are like who even are you i, I want to see that kind of side of ogawa because yeah so far it's just been hilarious i love it all right now now i'm going to the big one this is the big theme of the comments it is fine slash ryoko slash shirabe slash what actually happened oh yeah so this is how i understand it so you're all receptor children right all all the all our girls the receptor children Fine is always within Shirabe. Cool. So there's no Fine in Mario, which we've learned. And there's no Fine in Kirika, which is a surprise to her. And it turns out there's a bunch of examples of Shirabe being different. So there was some eye color stuff. There was the line that she shared with Genjiro. There was the line that she shared with uh, Hibiki, where her eye color changed. And then she said something that Ryoko said in the last season. There was her song being uh, kind of a reference to the moon and her DNA and all these other kind of references. There was Shinsasu with the details of Shirabe equaling moon, equaling bunny, equaling the ears that she has, equaling the moon equals Fine. So there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff there that links Shirabe to Fine. Cool. The other part of it is there's no Ryoko, or there was some conjecture, maybe there is part of Ryoko, maybe there isn't, it's... Again, we never really met the real Ryoko, the one that Genjiro knew. We never met her. So those points were based off Ray Shadow, Bonnie, Vitaly Kuzman, and the aforementioned Shin Sasu, but that begs the question, Fine's so-called redemption arc, I guess. I think if this is it... For Fine and everything, that is bad. That is a bad arc. There is clearly set up in season one of her going, you haven't seen the last of me. And then if this is the last we see of her without anything in between that explains anything, I think that's just poor writing. It's not using one of your setups and something that should probably be addressed, I think. I understand the production stuff around Symphony Gear. This is the first time I've really noticed how bad it's gotten, I guess. So I'm talking about each season being perceived as the last season of Symphony Gear, which isn't a way to make uh, kind of serialized television. So there was some stuff in season one, right, where it was uh, there was the big setup about Hibiki dying and being dead, and then that was just retconned immediately. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess the show keeps going, sure. Um, and that was kind of weird and strange, but they, they made it work, I think. 
this one is like we're setting up a series villain essentially somebody that should be taken seriously and somebody that is going to come back bigger than ever and then they just don't so maybe there's some kind of something that happens in between with with fine that makes her change her tact maybe she was always like this why why hasn't she become angry again what is this other side to fine either way vitali kuzman and shinsasu talk about that one i just it's just confusing that there's definitely an implication at the end of season one that she's going to persist so if this is the end if fine has gone what was the point I don't know. That's just my feelings on it. I'm very glad for this one. Bamps shouted out the song Edgeworks of the Goddess Zababa, which is the Shirabe Kirika song that played during episodes 10 and 11. No, it was episodes 11 and 12. And yeah, it's probably my favorite song in the series so far. It, from a compositional level, it is stellar. It is so good. It is one of the ones that I really want to check out on my own time and add to all my playlists and do all that stuff with it. But I can't. Well, I probably can on Spotify, but it's probably still not safe because you just get auto-played some stuff, and yeah, I, I don't want to deal with that. But yeah, probably the musical moment of the series so far for myself. There was a nice touch in episode 12 of Symphony Gear G, which mirrored uh, episode 12 of the first season, where Mario says some very similar lines to Fine as Hibiki powers up out of nothing. I, th I think this is a good mirroring, and I think I talk about in predictions, yeah, there'll continue to be some mirroring between seasons one and two. Apparently, Subasa used her season one gear and song when she kind of tricked Ver, essentially. Yeah, that went straight over my head. I didn't even know that there was a difference between Season 1 and 2 Tsubasa Sympho gear design. I just didn't notice at all. And yeah, I had heard the song before, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't know when. It's all blending together a little bit. Finally, from Bonnie, the discussion of a general driving force theme of Sympho gear, among others, is a need to find home, or a sense of home, a sense of belonging within a group. Think about Chris, she's all about that. So I think if we keep an eye on this going forward, maybe as it pertains to a... Kirika and Shirabe and Maria, considering how much they mirror uh, our main group. I think that's something to watch. Uh, definitely, I can see that theme with Hibiki and Miku as well. So again, yeah, keeping an eye on it. So right, here's a little bit of inside baseball. I went to write a recap and then I wrote like a full page in my Word document that has my script, essentially. Uh, so I'm going to do a state of play instead, where, where all the characters are, what they're going to do. Uh, just because there was so much content in 11 and 12, it was actually kind of ridiculous. So Kirika and Shirabe, their conflict is for now solved, or at least a little bit. It seems like they're all back to normal. There's no Fine to be found. Fine is essentially killed by Kirika, which is kind of crazy. That's actually a pretty good setup from early in the, in the season when it's like, oh yeah, it kills anybody it hits. It takes a soul. And yeah, it took a soul, all right. I think they've stated now that they're on their way to help Maria. So we'll see what manifests from there. Subasa and Chris conflict resolved. So whatever conflict they had kind of around like calling each other by the right names and their personal connections between each other and a whole bunch of other stuff went into it for sure. A little bit of angst from Chris, which isn't unexpected. So they've scared Ver. He's gone up the elevator of doom and they've stolen Solomon's cane off him. They snatched it off him so he can't use that to generate noise to threaten other people and make people do what he wants anymore. At least for now. So Ver is a little bitch, which I'm sure I've gone into in great detail, and uh, has kind of gone off the deep end and shot Mum into the moon, which was kind of funny. Uh, Maria was about to kill Ver because of this. You know, you killed my mum, I'm going to kill you. Eye for an eye. But she got her power snatched by Hibiki. Now, apparently she doesn't absorb power, she links power, but it certainly looked like she absorbed Maria's power because Maria lost power and Hibiki gained power. Either way, Hibiki's stopping somebody from dying, she's saving somebody, it's within her repertoire, it's it's within her character arc. She yelled like Sympho Gear or something, and then the episode ended, and it was pretty cool, so I think we're about to jump off right there. Apparently Genjiro and Ogawa are on the way as well. Miku is watching on with great interest, especially considering that Hibiki was naked, and uh, the entire world saw Hibiki as well, so... He does the entire world now know that Hibiki is a Sympho gear and she'll have some kind of notoriety regarding that? You'd think so, considering it's being broadcast around the world. So that's kind of a prediction for future in the series, I guess. But I have some predictions that are more pressing. I have bad feelings about Genjiro, and I'll talk about why. So our two groups kind of mirror each other, right? And we've just had Mom die, who was the adult presence that was guiding a lot of the kids on the 
evil side, I guess you would call them. But uh, Genjiro, he's running into the fray. He is certainly somebody that we care about that could be threatened by Ver or something. And, and again, that would be a stakes raiser for this finale, I guess. So I don't know. I, I don't think Genjiro will die or anything, but I think he may be threatened. I think that's interesting. Within that, I think Dr. Ver is going to transform into some kind of giant abomination or something, considering he already has a furry arm. Uh, he may transform into a mega furry or something. I don't really know, but I think it's going to mirror season one in that way. We're going to get a big, dumb, uh, almost tokusatsu fight where we kill a big, stupid dude. You know, we killed Fine when she turned into that giant thing as well. Kind of like that. I think there's going to be some kind of triburst move to defeat him. It may even be like a like a, like a sextuple hexagonal burst or something. Uh, they're all going to shoot all their power all at, all at Vera all at once. I think that's going to be pretty cool. I think Maria, Shirabe, and Kiriko all walk off into the sunset to be seen later in the series. I think they will all survive now. I think there'll be some kind of resolution to the Maria... Uh, Serena stuff as well, some kind of peace found there. And yeah, can't wait to jump into episode 13. I'm also going to do the OVAs and extras if I didn't mention already, so I think there's two 12, 13 minute-ish OVAs and the extra, which I'm pretty sure is just uh, Miku's transformation sequence, which I saw on Discord already, but I'll play it here. Um, so yeah, I might I mightn't have much to say about that stuff, I'll see how substantial it is. Uh, either way, my shul stuff before I jump into the episode proper. If you like the video, consider liking the video. If you like the video and want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I can do to improve my presentation, comment below. I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter if you'd like me to follow you back, if I can speak. And the Discord, join the Discord, love the Discord, uh, talk about Symphony on the Discord, correct me if I'm wrong on the Discord, lots of different stuff. And yeah, jumping into episode 13 of Simpho Gear G right now. Radio got episode 13 of Simpho Gear G up here ready to go. Let me pop that up on screen. 25 minutes and 14 seconds. Slightly longer one by like a minute. That's crazy. Uh, either way, D-Truck subs and picture and picture down in the description below for those that want it. Either way, jumping into the episode now with a 3, 2, 1. Radio. 3, 2, 1. Hell yeah. Okay, we're back. Hibiki's gonna do some cool stuff. She's attuned with Gungnir. It's true. <laughs> oh yeah, I love how scared he is of Hibiki. Yeah, here we go. Oh god. Mari is dead. Bye. Oh, we just shaking it up into the air. Has he become the machine or something? I like how immediate it's going like awfully. It's true, yes. He's kind of popping off, I'm not even going to lie. Okay, do we need to go to the core to do that? Don't even have the right to fight. It's true. Whoa. Okay. Okay, this seems like a bad idea. I mean, if Ogawa's there, he's just gonna ninja them anyway. Okay, bye. You got saved. Oh, this is cool. We're back. It's true. All right, what are we doing? Yeah. 
yeah, it was all part of the plan. That's why I went evil for like two seconds. Yep. Yes, sir. We love to fight. Kind of. Okay, sure. Whatever you say. Earthbender? Not quite. Super Nephilim. Yeah, but like powered up. So this is kind of what I predicted. Yeah. <laughs> Great. All right, what are we going to do, Mario? No, no, you can do some stuff, for sure. All right, where's Serena? Perfect. Knew it. Look at this shit. Yeah. Yeah, because my sacrifice wasn't for you to be the most important person ever. Pretty natural wish. Great. Okay, so that's, that's come full circle too. Oh, this is a gorgeous uh, composition for it. The harmonies. Oh, everyone all around the world, put your hands up. Give Goku your energy. Yes. Oh, sounds fantastic. What? Are you kidding me? What? Yeah, she's singing her song and she's saving the world. How are you alive? Is she up on the moon? That would make sense, right? Bit more of a dramatic sacrifice, I say. Yeah, she's determined. Oh, is she singing again? I hope so. We have to get some bangers. It's the last episode. Yeah, shoot it with your gun. Nah, I didn't do shit. Whoa! Crazy vacuum arm. Oh, everyone's helping. Great! Okay, that kills things in one shot. Why don't we just fire that at it? Hey, look, everybody's helping. Yeah, sick. He does look pretty strong. Hello, everybody. Are we going to hold hands?
Are you sure about that? What if you just killed them all right now? That would be funny. I'm still getting ready to cheer when Ver dies. Maybe everybody did die just, like, just now. That, that looked pretty bad. I agree. What is happening? I turned into a ball? What is this? Okay, sure. Oh, the drums in this. Yeah, this is her, like, hero moment. Is this, like, a big, um... It's, like, the last number in a musical. Are they all gonna sing together? Great. Okay, so we're, we're linking everybody together and we're super punching it. Or oh, the rainbow. Let's all hold hands! Yeah, sick. Yeah. Yeah, it go beyond being a hypocrite, actually fulfill it. What you've been saying. And I'm gonna belt out this note too. By working together. No. Oh shit, cool. It's everybody. You can't beat everybody. <laughs> yeah, look at this cool shit. Alright, so everyone powered up. Great. They became triple S plus forms. Rainbow beam, baby. The power of gay. Yo, they look cr they look like angels. What the hell? All right, cool. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you lost. And now I'm gonna beat you up. He curved the bullet. Sure. Yeah, what is he doing? Okay, what does this mean? Sure. Whatever you say. Okay, so you're gonna blow everything up? Is that like a sort of like a super nuke? How so? The super frontier. Because that was the whole point. If we killed you now, then Hibiki's thing would be in vain. Is he going to punch a meteor? <laughs> sure. Okay. Justice. I hate that. Oh, he hates it. Alright, fair enough. 
But I also don't like that we're not killing Ver. I don't like that he's not dead in a ditch somewhere. Okay. Oh, that's pretty impressive looking. Oh, look at this, like, space deity. Yeah. Full on, um, I think it was Final Fantasy I said last season too. Feels like that again. What are we doing? Sorry? Final Omega style. I'm not going to be able to read that. Sure. Gotcha. Okay, so it just absorbs. Alright, so that, okay, that's our difference. Interesting. I'll talk about this a lot. Yeah, what? Okay, so X Drive is the more powerful form, right? All right, are we going to trap him in there? How are we going to get him in there? Cool. I like that Murray is doing it. Or at least helping. I think we're all going to help, right? She's stuck in wires? Okay. Nah, we don't do heroic self-sacrifice. We don't do that. Uh-huh. We rely on each other. We don't take it all on ourselves. We hold hands. Yeah, no. That was never going to be the case. Oh god, he's in, uh, noise hell. Yeah, sick. Oh, the song is- it's like giving me Daft Punk. That's cool. Oh, we're all going in together? Sure. Alright, bye. Sure. Yeah, I'd be devastated too. My wife just died. Again. You gotta die soon, right? We playing the opening again? Sure. I like how broad the scope went in, like, 20 minutes. That's crazy. Now we're fighting in, like, another dimension. Oh my god. Yeah, they don't mess around with the spectacle in these, do they? Sure. What Solomon's cane? <laughs> Yelling Serena. Oh god, we're going to the beach. We're going to Destiny Island.
He's blocking the way. Why don't we shoot him with a super mega rainbow beam again? Okay. Heart sword. Great. Far short straight. What are we doing? Are we turning into... No. Wait. What? What are we doing? We turned into a giant fist. Sure. <laughs> Vitalization. That's the name of the song, right? Yeah. Alright, we did it. Now, close the thing. Oh, she hit that note, though. Who's going to grab the thing? Why is she here? Sure. Thanks, Maker. What? <laughs> She's got quite the arm on her. Until next season, anyway. Alright. Whoa. We won? Question mark? Yeah. Seemingly we won. Somebody just, like, punch this guy in the head, please. I'll take that. It's true, we won. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure she's dead. Like, she's been... I've been projecting the whole season. Oh, her relic broke. There you go, do you want that back? Alright, sure. What are you gonna do then? Yeah, kind of. But also, we're not all gonna die. Forever the Optimist. The power of song. The power of music. That's kind of off into the sunset. And a bigger uh, old, um, I guess you would call it a melody of everyone together. Of this song. When did they sing this one? Was this the start of the season? I think it was, yes. Kind of bringing full circle on the season. 
Uh, yeah, I'll talk about it more in detail here in a second, but that was just pure spectacle for, for like 25 minutes, just like um, completely and totally, which makes it, um yeah, really unfortunate timing last week. I should have just went straight through it, would have made it a whole lot better. Just cutting off on the good part, really. Sure. Oh, post credit scene. I was expecting that to end. Great. What? Oh, she's too embarrassed. It's true. Yeah, don't be a bully. Yeah. Yeah, look at this slice of life shit. Also, doesn't everybody know that she's like the world saving hero now? It's true. From the very start of the season, season, show. Okay. Grab the sun. Okay. Fine? No, just Finn. Uh, Radio jumping into a little bit of analysis on episode 13 of Symphony Gear G. So yeah, that was episode 13 of Symphony Gear G. Quite enjoyed it. Thought it was very good. So if you aren't watching any of my other series, this is how I'm going to do the analysis portions now. I've got my pen tool over here. I can draw like, oh, there's like a there's like a V in Hibiki's legs or something. I don't know. Like you know what I mean? Like I can draw on the screen and point stuff out and do all that kind of stuff. So that's cool. I just thought, hey, my face isn't as important to this segment of the of the video, I guess. So, have the episode bigger. Why not? So yeah, as I was saying during the ED, pretty much all spectacle this episode, and yeah, it paid off in that we had all the girls holding hands, working together, uh, becoming their X drive forms, I think you call them, and yeah, just essentially fighting against the odds continuously for the full runtime. Really, we have the girls kind of walking off into the sunset. The three Mario, Shirabe, Kirika, probably to be seen again, you would think. Uh, Ver's in prison. I wonder if he's going to impact the plot later on in any way. We can only hope not. We have Mario giving up her Simpho gear, giving up her relic to Hibiki. You're more worthy of Gungnir than me. Kind of, yeah, the, kind of the final... Okay, so the whole season, I've kind of lamented that we're all trying to do the same thing, and we keep fighting each other, but again, that's, again, that's the premise of the show, and us coming together here is cathartic because of that, you know? It feels nice to see everybody, all these characters that I like, finally on the same page and doing the same thing. It helps that the spectacle's really good, and the music's really good too. And yeah, we don't really waste any time jumping into the action, so I won't waste any time jumping into the analysis as well. So yeah, this is undeniable proof right here, right now, that everybody will now know that Hibiki is the the grand savior. Is this going to impact the plot in any way? Are people going to recognize her? Are people going to target the people around her because of this? It remains to be seen. Maybe that's a season three jobby and beyond. Because in the past, she's been kind of a superhero on the side that some people knew that she was, you know, about it. But most people didn't, and now I think that that's changed, looking at this shot. I don't know, maybe it isn't relevant at all, and I'm just kind of gas-bagging about something, but uh, but it feels like it should be. I wanted you three to become involved more again. I guess you guys sing and help, but everybody in the world also did that as well, so. I don't know, Ataba and the gang will be back, and bigger than ever, in future installments. And then Ver's a little bitch, so he runs off scared. 
which is great. So here I think he creates like a portal. Here I thought he was integrating within the whole thing and then he was going to become part of the the conglomeration and get absorbed as well. But no, he's just kind of creating a portal to another spot in the in the structure. So he creates a portal to go through there and then Genjiro later he punches the ground and just gets through anyway because he's cool. So I think that's a nice touch. Like, Ver's all about his portals, Genjiro just straight fist, punch ground, go through. Episode 13, up in the heavens, the stars turned into music one day. Isn't that the, um, that feels like one of the lines under the title, you know what I mean? So, let's talk about Ver's motivations this episode. So, one, he wants to stay alive and rule the world. Cool. If that doesn't happen, which becomes increasingly and increasingly likely, two, he wants to become a martyr. And we're going to prevent both from happening, and that's the worst thing possible. So people like this, their main motivation isn't to live through it all and, you know, come out on the other side okay and reap the benefits. They're quite happy being the person that makes the change if it costs their own life. And in this case, it's a little bit more like, if I can't have it, nobody can. You know what I mean? So he's taking everybody out with him. It's a destructive cycle. And yeah, we're going to stop that. That's a big reason why we're not killing him. All right, cool. So we have Mario and her two sides displayed here quite well as well. She's very meek right now. I can't save anybody, blah, 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 blah. She still thinks all of her friends are fighting as well um, among each other. They're going to kill each other. So that probably doesn't help as well. And then Hibiki's here to save the day. She asked me to save you. Shirabe asked me to save you. That's why I'm here. I've accomplished my mission kind of, and you can move on essentially. I've got it from here. Just trying to generally reassure Maria that everyone's okay and that she's here to help her. And there's the aforementioned Genjiro punch. So like I was talking about before, I had grave fears for Genjiro. And this was a big red flag for me. I was like, oh, he's going to go, like, not die, but maybe get really injured or something like that. And that didn't occur, which is good. We like we like alive Genjiro. Hibiki's just put on a masterclass this episode of reassuring people, connecting power, punching, you know, being nice. All the Hibiki things. She's just been pure Hibiki, and we love that. We meet up with the other two, and we're going to... This is our classic trio. We're going to do what we've always done. We're going to do the same thing that we did in the end of uh, Season 1, right? I don't think that's going to work the same way here. The Force is too powerful. So Hibiki also knows that Chris has been after Solomon's cane. It's been a huge part of her character, and you did it. A bit of congratulations for her, too. Even takes aside a moment in the battle to do so. Nice touch. I liked it. So to me, this all read like a lot of mumbo jumbo about the same thing. We're going to do the evil. <laughs> We're going to do the Nephilim evil thing. As always, the music playing is appropriately cheesy and uh, yeah, almost adventure serially. I, I actually really like it. It's like the dramatic thing is happening, the evil thing. So Nephilim is eating away from the frontier within, using all the power as such to become more powerful. So as we can see here, this manifests through it forming out of stone and becoming even bigger version of the ones we fought past in the season. There it is. It's a, it's definitely a design, sure. It's like a hammerhead shark on meth. I guess I'll talk about it here. Okay, so this is where we get, from what I was talking about early in the season, the real manifestation of the theme of Sinfuguji. A little bit. So Nephilim consumes... Nephilim absorbs, right? Absorbs probably a bad word because it's more related to Nephilim, right? The only reason Hibiki took Maria's powers is because she needed to stop her killing Ver and she needed to save Ver. That was a big reason why. But later on, she just redirects that back into Maria anyway. And then Maria reciprocates at the end of the episode by giving over Gungnir back to Hibiki. I think that works a lot. So Nephilim absorbs all the energy of the frontier, all everything everyone's been working to on the evil team, all together, and is and is all for one, essentially. It's one for all versus all for one, essentially, right? Because then Hibiki spreads the load. She lets everybody go X-Drive. Everybody works to save. Everybody holds hands. Everybody becomes the giant fist to, to punch it, right? And us working together as a team with the same motivations, the same beliefs in our hearts, you win. Uh, again, it's not exactly Shakespeare or anything, but it's pretty good, I think. It at least works thematically, and it's a thematic difference between our main villain in this episode and the heroes. I think it's explored quite well. 
As I predicted in the prediction segment, we have Maria at her lowest moment, and we get the resolution with the Serena stuff. So notice how distraught and forlorn she is right now, all very, you know, slow. Arms kind of drooped, shoulders drooped, head down. And we'll notice a character design difference when we go into our heroic moments. So I'm not exactly sure what this is. I'm pretty sure it's just like a hallucination, right? No, that's a bad way to put it. It's, it's, it's... Serena showing up and saying to Mario, hey, I'm behind you. Your life doesn't need to mean something because of my death. You know what I mean? I didn't sacrifice myself for that, right? That doesn't need to be meaning to everything in that way. Another part of it is always believe in yourself. What do you want to do? I'll help you accomplish it. The climax of the scene is the full circleness of the season in a way. So this was the first thing we saw in Sinfro Gear G, and it's coming back in the last episode and motivating Maria again. All talk about the apple crashing down on the ground, Lulu or Mel, stars, lots of stuff. Shout out to the musical composition here. So we start, okay, Maria does one part, then uh, Serena does one part, then Maria, then Serena, then they duet, then the whole world joins in on the chorus. You know, just musical concepts bringing together themes. It's very smart stuff, something that Symphony does really well. Like that part in particular, it was like, da da, and then someone else's voice, da da da, and then together right there at the end. Brilliant. And everyone all around the world is, you know, praying and humming the same melody. And it's kind of like season one's climax in that way. Everyone's putting their energy together, put up your hands, give your energy to Goku, that kind of vibe. Again, mirroring episode one, where we see people all around the world tuning into this concert where Maria announces her intentions. The most weird of which is Mom, who also hears, which is kind of crazy. She doesn't stop not dying. <laughs> She's like a cockroach. Um, in the best way possible, of course. We kind of see her, her thing drifting out into space. Don't ask me how she has oxygen or anything, or how her wheelchair turned into a mech. Don't ask me any of these things. I don't know. But most importantly, she gives Maria some hope. So this amount of phonic gain that it's even visible on the screen is enough to keep the moon in the air. I think Maria kind of undersells this as well. She thought mum was dead for like a good 10 minutes there. And then mum's like, no, I'm back. Smile. It's like, sure. <laughs> and then she's just like, oh yeah, hey, hi. And of course, there's a final goodbye, which is a little more touching. But I don't know, I'd go, she hits that mum, but I'd go, mum, you know. So the relationship between Serena and Maria ends up being one of the main motivating factors behind the moon not falling out of the sky. They achieved their purpose. It's a nice kind of resolution of what they were doing in that way as well. You were no longer led on up like kind of astray on the path of Ver. You accomplished what you actually wanted to do with the power of song and the power of everybody else. Nice. Good Sympho Gear thoughts. That's a better mum. Look at that. Okay, so maybe she was in disbelief at first. So one more sad mum, and then eyebrows fill, kind of sharpen in a little bit. Yeah, and then the little wry smile. I'm back to being confident, right? And then what do I do? I spin around, and I absolutely slay. So she's going crazy right now. Hand on hip. Straight back. Arm out. It's such a stark difference between this and what she was like before. And I think that's cool. This scene basically exists to demonstrate our three girls as they stand right now don't stand any chance of winning. They need extra help. And that comes in the form of two other girls. So again, I thought this thing like killed anything it touched, like destroyed its soul. I guess Nephilim doesn't have a soul. I don't know, weird. Either way, Kirika and Shirabe are here. So basically we now see everybody coming together. Maria, Kirika, Shirabe with Chris, Hibiki, Subasa all working together for the one goal, something that we've wanted to see basically the entire runtime. And it's just cool. Look at this. Like, look at this on screen. It's just cool, obviously. And yeah, this is a great build into, you know, transformation, song, and we just build and build and build from here, basically. How long is this into the episode? Seven minutes, pretty much for the next, like, 12. It's pure action. So for a start, it looks like everybody's going to die to this fireball. And this is pretty great because we get Ver like dramatic, like evil laughing, and then he gets interrupted by a song. And he goes, huh? It's pretty good. And yeah, this is kind of the structure that we get right here. Like this, 
I guess you would call it a globe, right? This globe you normally get when people are transforming and everybody's in within the same globe, essentially. So we're doing like a group transform thing, you know? It's it's the pure essence of Simpro Gear down to an action set piece. You know, all about sharing, all about uh, holding hands, all about working together for a common goal. And we get a group song, essentially. It's our first of two or three melodies this episode. Everybody sings a lot together, which is something that I've been wanting and praying for for a lot of the series, which is great. Just brings together our concepts in the same way that uh, that uh, the Edgework song last episode did. And of course, I'm going to read the lyrics. We are our souls, they bind us together. They bind us together, I should say. They are the light in the heavens linking you to me. Our souls? I guess. S2CA channel... She's doing like a triburst, but there's more of them. Kind of like my prediction. I like we get this rainbow sub when we're all singing together, which is great. You know, a lot of concepts of Symphony Gear come together in a rainbow, which is uh, thematically relevant as well, I will say. We also sometimes get a white text when everyone's singing as well, I think I noticed. And look, we're literally all holding hands. It's great. We're bound by the love of a million suns. All throughout the universe. Now we return to the flame of Genesis. Sure. Like ancient times. Throughout history, everybody all together, kind of. Through history and space, through space and time, we're all together. And yeah, it, during this scene, we get kind of Shirabe holding hands with Tsubasa and then Kirika and Chris. Just kind of visually demonstrating that we're all in this together. Pure high school musical stuff. And this is important dialogue here, too, from, uh, from Shirabe. So her whole beef with Hibiki has been in this belief that she's a hypocrite. She wants to save everybody, but she's naive in doing so. Her actions directly against what they're trying to do is, in essence, killing more people, right? They're, they're both trying... But they don't know about the moon at that point. So if they just told them, then it would be fine. But they couldn't have because reasons. Because um, they would tell other people and then it would leak and then there will be mass hysteria. Lots of reasons, right? And this is a statement by Shirabe that, hey, maybe what you believe in can work. Maybe we don't need to go about this thing focusing only on power and strength. Maybe we can do it by working together, by covering each other's weaknesses, by doing all these other things, right? It's, yeah, again, full circle on concepts from G. I think this is a really good way to end a season. I've said it multiple times now that we're bringing full circle. And yeah, that's what we like, right? This is the advantage of doing, of thinking that this is the last thing you'll do. It means that every single kind of final episode feels like a true culmination. Well, you don't normally get that in, you know, more serialized manga-based anime adaptions. Together with our hearts, with the strength of the sun, our souls told this story together with our hearts, is the lyrics there as well. With the strength of the sun and the tenderness of the moon. Okay, so I think that was Kirika into Shirabe. That would make sense to me. I'm trying to focus on the voices, but I'm bad, so I can't really tell. But I'm imagining everyone's just singing together, of course. There's some things you can only do by holding hands. This is important for Mario as well. Somebody that is strictly against this stuff is more focused on the power. That's been her whole thing, right? That's why she doubled down and went back to Ver. She needs power to accomplish her goals, to give kind of worth to her life, to give worth to saving everybody, to give worth to Serena's sacrifice. But in reality, she can't do it all on her own. She's just scared and timid deep down and needs some help. And this is the realization of that. And it's satisfying. Everything about this is satisfying. It's great. And their gear starts to separate from their bodies here as Ver fires another super beam at them. The future opens up ahead of us. The story nears its end. Will it begin anew? It will. Symphony Gear Season 3 coming soon. Our miracles enter the history books they will endure here as we get flashes all around the world of this historic moment, everybody singing together. So again, this builds off season one. We had all of Lydian and everybody around that area kind of singing and giving them X drive in the past. And now got six girls, everybody all around the world is singing, basically sends them into super forms. And we get that hitting of the chorus again, as we see everybody's new crazy designs. Again, we're going full Final Fantasy, full, like, like absolute excess with all these, and I kind of love it. So basically, we destroyed Nephilim, or what we think is Nephilim so far, and Ver is devastated, and we love that. Okay, so let's talk about this. Ogawa, what are you doing, buddy? So, okay, Ver goes to grab the thing with his disgusting beast arm, and Ogawa, like, curves the bullet out of his gun... 
in like a parabola and then it hits his shadow and then he has like a shade stitcher and it's kind of like there's origami and like traditional Japanese art and it kind of looks like Subasa's shit but sure we're just running with it he's a ninja he can shoot people's shadows with a bullet and keep them in place sure if miracles are the reward for trying as hard as you can then I deserve one I mean he's kind of right except that he's working for a nefarious purpose. So Verve releases Nephilim's heart. Now it will rage unchecked through the frontier and gain basically all of the power of the frontier altogether. So everything that everyone's been working to up to this point on the evil team, right, is now going to happen, right? It's all going into the one guy. We're going to put all our eggs in one basket, essentially. And yeah, if I can't be a hero in this world, it should just evaporate. Definitely sane people thoughts. All the girls get word of this and they're ready for another fight. Ver laments being captured alive. It would make things so much easier for you to simply kill me now. I could come back, blah, 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 all these feelings. Very dramatic and somewhat typical uh, villain speech, right? When we save the villain. Why don't you kill me? Kill me now. I want to die. I don't want to live in a world where I haven't accomplished this thing. I've been that committed to it. Gendra is like, no, nope, I'm not giving you the satisfaction. And also, we don't do that here. Instead, we punch meteors out of the sky because we're sick. Yeah, we're, we're not letting you become, again, this idea of history too. We're not letting you become part of history like that, right? Instead, this is going to be about saving, not about destroying. So yeah, the frontier kind of destroys itself and turns into a giant lava ball. I didn't notice this during the reaction because it was so damn quick, but they shoot the ground around the ship, the ship, the submarine, it's everything, and it falls back down to the beach where we find it later. That's why Mik Miku's nearby. Yeah, look at this, like, dramatic shit, basically. All the energy pouring into the one point. <laughs> yeah, it, it turns into a giant devil space thing, which is sick. Like, it just is. You can't even argue it. So Shirabe kind of makes a mech, too. Final Omega style dystopia. Sure, <laughs> we're gonna run with it too. And this is a attack I can't read. It says last something. I've got no clue. So the whole thing we learn from this is whenever you attack it, attack it solo anyway, or even in a duo, it just absorbs your attack power back into it. Its whole thing is absorbing, right? It's not going to uh, cooperate with you actually attacking it. You need something else. You need a different strategy. So this works into the law system. It consumes relics. It consumes relic energy. It consumes attacks too. At this point, Chris tries to open a gate to Babylonia because of course. So her X drive is able to amplify the Solomon's cane and allow this to be possible. This is part of what Fine was trying to do too? Maybe? I forget. Either way, Chris knew this was possible. And then the idea becomes trapping Nephilim within the treasury. And then this is the full circle on Chris's stuff. Show us that the cane isn't just a tool for murder. Show everybody that I'm not just a tool for murder, that I have a place and can live and all these other things, right? Bit of Subasa theme in that too. I'm not just a sword. Show that my sacrifice or sacrifices for Solomon's cane and bringing it back to life for Fine wasn't in vain. That it actually led to some good happening, right? And it did. It, it led to saving the world. So despite everything it's done up to this point, it's also saving people. Great. That's actually really cool. So Nephilim realizes this, slaps it out of Chris's hand, and Mario catches it and yells, for the future, and then shoots it again. So great. This is, again, we're, we're uniting on the same objective, right? Mario and Chris doing the same thing. Cool, and now we get to talk about this. So it grabs Maria and it's going to drag it down to the Babylonian hell treasury gate, right? And Maria suggests that I'll close the gate from the inside, trapping Nephilim with me. This will be a how heroic self-sacrifice, one giving up for many, right? No, 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 that's not how we ride in Simpho gear. You're not going to become another Serena, right? You're not going to do something like that and leave the same gap for Kirika and Shirabe. Right, this, that, that same feeling. We're breaking the cycle a little bit. We even get uh, Kirika and Shirabe yelling out for Marion not to do this. So through this, she'll protect the lives of everybody, even though it won't come close to atoning for her sins. Bit of self-hatred there, right? Bit of lack of self-worth. And then if you're doing that, it's only fair that we do the same thing as well and protect you. Because it's Simpho gear, baby. And Hibiki's here, and Hibiki's doing Hibiki things. 
I just love how pure excess this all is. Of course, we go to space. Of course, we're fighting in space. Of course, we have ridiculous outfits on. Of course, we go to a different dimension. Of course, we're fighting something massive that's going to destroy the world. Like, it's just, it's extra, and we love it. I'm not a hero. I can't save the world, but we're not alone. Everyone's trying to do the same thing. Focus on the bigger picture here. I'm happy that Mom's actually officially dead now, I believe. Having saved the moon and everything, she did her job and then she's gone. Called bleeding from every orifice as the opening starts. The world won't have to end. I did it. I won. You did something, Mom. You did it. That's great. And yeah, we're, we're hitting a lot of the same notes as season one here. Playing the opening, the last big attack is named after the opening. It's all very dramatic. We're in a really... I guess, crazy space, a different dimension, basically. There's noise flying everywhere. There's weird temple shit. It's just cool. It's a, it's a great spectacle for a finale. I'm worried I haven't been using this stuff enough. Like, you know, I haven't been, I haven't been using it. I think this is mainly due to this being less a character episode and more a spectacle episode, and a lot of it speaks to itself, right? I could talk about you know, six things going into one thing and how that all links together and how we're all helping each other. Like, we have uh, Shirabe cutting the ropes here on, on Maria. There's lots of stuff I could point out, but I just think it's more useful for actual shot breakdowns and actual, like, character, like, little subtle character movement. Like, I could break down that tie scene like that, right? Either way, it'll be a thing in the future. Just keep it in mind, even if I'm not using it much today. Please focus on trying to reopen the gate. If you did it from the outside, you can do it from the inside too. It's not exactly subtle, but she also yells out Serena when she shoots this beam. And it's taken us to the beach, apparently. That's cool. Like, Nephilim's kind of protecting the exit there, right? The only way we can go through is if we hold hands and superpower up. And it all resonates into a giant sword. And far, short, and straight. And then the sword disappears. And then powers up over them. And different parts of their kind of gears all fly off and forms one fist, two fist, two sides coming together, clenching. It's our ultimate handhold power attack that then spins and destroys everything. Now that's cool. <laughs> now that's how you do thematic spectacle. And it's called vitalization. Fantastic. Yeah, again, I should talk about it in more detail. These two sides that have been in conflict basically the entire season, people swapping between the two sides, blah, 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 blah. They're finally coming together for a common purpose, and it's visually represented by a cool space fist dimension attack. And that's anime, baby. That's what we like about it. We're using big, dumb, fun concepts to explain plot stuff, to explain the themes, to explain... Yeah, it's, it's just exactly what I want out of anime, is what I see right now on screen. And we seemingly get a little bit of the second verse to the opening here too. I think it's uh, Nana Mizuki, right? She's killing it, which is great. We have a strong-willed comrade that can help us. And it's Hibiki's best friend. Best friend. But yeah, she comes in and saves the day because Miku's sick. And again, it's it's she was on both sides as well, so it thematically works too. And it's nice that she has some agency in the final conflict. I think that's that's a nice touch. And Hibiki taught me you don't need a gear to fight. I'll fight too. It's very true, this is exactly what she did. And she basically just throws Solomon's cane at it. Should be like, she should get some, um, some baseball scouts onto her. She's got quite the arm. So effectively, this is the end of Solomon's cane as well, which is great. I wonder how we're going to do noise now. Weird. And big old rainbow sky as we close out. And now we just get five minutes of epilogue. Ver's being taken away. The moon has reached its orbit again, but we can't reach mum, basically. Maria's relic is broken, or... It's weird. I don't know which relic this is, because then she, later she gives Gungnir to Hippiki. Is it Serena's? Yeah, it's Serena's. I'm dumb. Yeah, that's Serena's relic. Of course. Okay, that's nice. So in seeing Mum's self-sacrifice as well reminds her of Serena. That's a nice touch. Hippiki goes to give back Gungnir, but Maria says, you're more worthy, which is another great touch too. It also allows our seasons to keep going on. Hippiki now has power again. But Mario will always be important to the plot in that regard. The old Gungnir's gone, replaced with new Gungnir. And they lament the curse of Bilal. We're still going to be unable to communicate with each other, really. There's still going to be chaos and disruptions and stuff we need to see through. But then we're like, songs still exist, so we can break through that communication barrier. We can break through that language barrier, because music is universal. 
And yeah, that's a nice fitting touch to end this season on, I believe. It's yeah. Lots of what we were talking about last season too. Songs can always break through it, which is another big theme of the Symphogy universe, just coming to fruition here. They're basically saying like Maria, Kirika and Shirabe will return in Endgame, so that'll be good. <laughs> I look forward to that. Cool, then we get everybody singing this song, and I just want to check something quickly. I just had to check like a million billion times, but I think this is the song from episode one of Symphogear, the one that Kanade and Tsubasa sing, not the one from the start of G. Okay, I knew it was at a concert, right? And yeah, great, great composition, great kind of closeout to bringing the whole series to a whole kind of, right? Full circle, you know? And yeah, we have a small little post credit scene too that I will have a look at. So it's basically a whole bunch of slice of lifey stuff. Like, hey, Sabas is like, Chris won't call me senpai again. And then it's like, oh, well, she's acting bashful. And then Hibiki's acting a little bit smug. And then she gets hit. And yeah, it's some of the stuff where I wish there was more of this in the show. This is what I really enjoy personally. So, I mean, I wish there was more of it. But we're seemingly not talking about Hibiki being outed yet. I don't know. It's a weird one. Maybe they already knew that she was a superhero. I don't know. Nobody seems to care, though. Yeah, and, and there we are, Finn. She's, she says some Symphogear stuff about the sound resonating in our hearts, and there's a feather. And yeah, we, we finish off Symphogear G right here, right now. So what did I think overall? It's good. It's a good episode. It's a good season. Uh, there's some stuff I would change around structure and that kind of stuff that I've talked about before, and around maybe making our characters all stop being stupid quicker. But again, that's the whole point of the show, and it coming together at the end was still very satisfying. The production was a huge step up from season one. The music was better basically across the board, I believe, as well. And yeah, if we continue that trajectory going forward into three, four, and five, then this show will be amazing. We seemingly are leaving without a main antagonist for the series. I don't believe it's going to be Ver. Fine's done. We need to find new characters again as we go forward. Mario, Shirabe, Kirika seemingly are going to return. And yeah, we'll, we'll see where it all takes us eventually. The, I wonder what the hook is going to be for Season 3. I genuinely don't know. But yeah, that is not us done for today. I'm going to watch the one extra, which I'm pretty sure is Miku's transformation sequence. And then there's two OVAs. So here's how I'm going to do it. And here's how I've done OVAs in the past. I'll do the timer base version here, of course. And there'll be picture-in-picture picture, uh, on the picture-in-picture picture version. But yeah, I'm probably not going to talk about them too much. There won't be much to break down, I don't believe. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll be more of a reaction segment than an actual analysis and what does this mean going forward segment, you know? Of course, if there's some interesting stuff, I'll talk about it. But again, we'll see. I wonder if they're going to be fan servicey as well. I guess there's only one way to find out. I don't know, onward and upward with the first extra and then into OVA 1 and 2. Radio. This says blank transformation from the BD release. I imagine it's Miku. I'm looking at it right now. It seems like it's Miku, and it goes for 50 seconds. So we're going to watch it here now. Giving it a three, two, one. Three, two, one, go. I think I've seen this on uh, Discord. Yeah, that sucks. This is way more your traditional, like, really bad magical girl transformation. Look at that evil shit. That's terrible. I hate that. Great. So yeah, I guess I just don't know why you would cut that. That's very weird to me. Uh, but yeah, it was very cool. As I said during the reaction itself, I hated it. And that's kind of the purpose. Cool. And now I've got up the first OVA here. Very cool. Uh, and I'm going to hit play on it in 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1, go. Non-Songs of the Valkyries. Sympho Gear. Roughly two weeks after destroying the Moon Shard. Okay, so we're doing this art style? Great. What bother? Oh yeah, they were recovering, right?
Yeah, but I want to go see Miku. Perfect. She was. She was devastated. The only thing I'm good for. I'm sure she doesn't care. She won't be mad, she'll be desperate. Uh, Hibiki's v, uh, VA just gets to pop off here, which too, which is too very good. If I can speak, Jesus. It, it isn't awkward, you kind of nailed it, it's fine. It's both. Great, what else we got? It's Chris up there. Yeah? Sure. Whatever you say. <laughs> Well, she may be hungry. I don't think you're allowed to get a pizza. Or oh, the, like, lion roar there, too. This is just basically let the VAs pop off. Like, that's the whole thing, right? Great. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I like how they're making fun of Chris. Why are you blushing? Oh, gee. We know something about G. Simpho Gear G? Think about it. No. They're all going crazy in isolation. This is a true ISO episode. There isn't, no. Oh yeah, she gets a party too. Great. I remember when Hibiki got a party. That was funny. Hello. Great. Hooray. That's kind of crayon art style. I think it's pretty cool. It's obviously low budget, but it's it's charming. It's nice. There you go. You made it. Great. No privacy. Exactly. How many of these are there? Is this uh, leading into meeting Miku? That's funny. Yeah, I hate you. Can't get over yourself. Look at this Sundare. Come on, be thrust into action. You could do that at home. Ha ha ha. Great, this is the, the last season of season one. <laughs> but reanimated, that's funny. 
<laughs> Just kiss, like honestly. Oh, the subbing. Great. Just punching her in the tit. The subbing's fantastic, though. Great. Where are we? Okay, we're back. You stopped hitting me. That was nice. Indeed. What are you embarrassed or something, Chris? It was very... I was going to uh, remark it was a little bit um, emotional. Just before the start of G. It just kind of happens. Oh, okay. That's not how karaoke works. Well, I guess if it's telling you the lyrics. I think she was correct. <laughs> Stop bullying her. What are those lyrics like lame or something? A little bit edgy. She is very edgy, but we love her. I agree with that, though, too. Whatever you say. Yes. It's true. Go straight for the bed, did you? Okay, Miku. Alright, so, like, canonically, right? Look at this look. Are they... Yeah. Yes, she is. She is uh, a little bit... <laughs> Very funny. Very fan service here. What are you going to spend it on? She does love her motorbikes, for sure. What are we buying? Why? Sure. Yeah, it's not exactly exciting. Like a motorbike. Thanks, Genjiro. Thanks, Dad. That's nice. Seven times on the way back. That's a nice uh, gesture, though.
you already kind of do. Yeah, but what else? Yes, I'll show up. Yeah, it's it's meant to, you know, promote you and stuff. Got no clue. No, you would know that because it's like your word. Another question? Go for it. Well, the music is great there. No clue. Great. What? No way. But she was basically just saying like her own little phrases. That's funny. I didn't say yes. funny it's a lot of these it was 13 minutes I guess it's true is it implied that she does that every day that's cute. Ha ha ha. That was lovely. Great. That was enjoyable. Pretty much not really what I thought either. Rightio, and now jumping into the last OVA, I think it's going to be pretty similar, but with characters from the new season. So, look forward to it. Three, two, one, go. The Non Songs of the Valkyries, Symphogear. Gear. Queens of Music, The Day Before, or The Concert? It's got a weird border around it. I wonder if that's supposed to be there. It's weird. A Sudden Assignment. But we were supposed to go together. Come on. <laughs> I love how overt the uh, the OVAs are about it. That's funny. The day of the event. Okay. Yes, what are we eating? Oh, this is going to be some pure Mio stuff. Where's, uh, where's... Where's everybody else? Where's Mugi? Where's Yui? Where's Ritsu? Azusa? I like how doting she is. It's funny. And to think we thought she was so scary. I mean, that is one of the perks, of course.
Look at this diva shit. Yeah, but Tsubasa doesn't buy into that. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Love that. Oh, and then you're nervous too. Oh, great. That, so that's the two sides of Murray again. Fantastic. I can't fight them. And the whole thing they have to fight to get the phonic gain for the thing over, right? Yeah, of course. Topu artist. Kawaii Taipu. Kawaii type. A little bit. And of course, I saw a little bit of, um, a little bit of Kana Day too, through the Gungnir thing. Oh, because they're talking about you? It's true. That is a superstition. A few days after the terrorist group appears. Okay. <laughs> is this based on the quiz show thing? I see. <laughs> because he's got the glasses on. How did this happen? How so? Oh, you're you're plotting something, Ogawa. Sentinel cooking? Yeah. I would watch it. Is this going to be the style of all the OVAs? Because it's cute. I actually really like it. They, okay, so they abandoned the hospital. That Shirava? Yeah. What are we cooking? Does it? Yeah, if you're just throwing everything in there. Was it secondhand kiss or something? I'm sure it's fine. Maybe it needs more salt, sure. Yeah, it's most definitely a uh, second-hand kiss situation. Oh, they ate the whole thing. I ate the whole plate. Haha. <laughs> Abandoned their hospital hideout. Sure. It's discount day at the market. That was just great. I love that. Wow. Like three dollars. <laughs> Whatever you say. Invented? Everyone's blushing this whole thing, too.
Yeah, fish do make your brain better. Okay, now what? What are you two doing? She is quite tall. I, I noted that during episode 13, actually. <laughs> sure, yes, she is. That was a quick one. What else? What's Hibiki doing? Hibiki hasn't been in one of these for a while. I mean, I'm not going to say no. What the hell was it? Was that a dream or what? What was that? Yes, okay. So now you're all sleeping together. I guess they were all in like jackets and stuff too. Now I'm still in your heat. <laughs> it's these are so gay. I can that's obviously a compliment. Like this is exactly what the fans want. Okay. So after so Miku's here, right? Before we get thrust into our final conflict. Conflict. It's true, that's what they were doing. That is also true. <laughs> How would you drop a hint about that? Okay, after completing our little training montage. Gonna talk to mum and dad. Whatever you say, Genjiro. What's the reward? Oh. What movie is it? It's probably some big action movie or something. Whatever it is, it's cool. She loved it. Equilibrium? I don't know what that is. After the Frontier's emergence. The slow zoom too. So that's what my lyrics were. Yes, indeed. So what does this say about you, Miku? And now Hibiki knows that? Great. I think she knew that anyway. The Frontier Incident. So this is in the future. Oh, again, now we're still on the beach. Okay. Hibiki looks weird there. Yeah, like what? Okay. Whatever you say. She was. I'm sure we'll assimilate you into the fold. I don't know what that is. She w she still kind of is edgy. And 
And then, like, I didn't really care. Great. Yes? Yeah, she's like some kind of sundra or something. Just before the beginning of a new story. So when did these come out? Okay, what? Was it some kind of confession? Weird. Well, they were really fun. I liked those. Nice little palate cleanser. Yeah, as I said just then, pretty fun. I really enjoyed them. Um, I don't think they're really worthy of getting them up and having another look. I'm pretty sure I just got them in the moment. They're very simple animation-wise, real crayon kind of children's book style. But yeah, show a lot of character between the characters and their interactions and that kind of thing. A lot of uh, fan service shipping stuff, a lot of gayness, which we love. And yeah, some of them tell like little contained stories, like Chris going to get the the Buddha statue and what that's about. Um, and then there's the stuff with Subasa and the game shows. And then there's some other stuff with cooking and Kirika and they're sharing a bed. And yeah, there's lots of stuff, right? Um, but yeah, I, I would say I enjoyed them. I will watch more of those. They are fun. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that's a nice little, again, much like Symphogear's pacing, coming off that high, but just kind of lulled back down. And it was a good way to end, I think. Um, so yeah, looking forward to Symphogear GX, I believe is the name of the next one. I'm looking forward to that next week. Probably going to do the one episode, but we'll see what happens. Just again, very busy on the Friday, as always. And yeah, can't wait to jump into more Symphogear next week. Looking forward to new stuff there. Uh, kind of what I was mentioning last week, if somebody on Discord wants to feed me a key visual or something to that effect that I can have a look at before the start of the next season of Simpho Gear. That would be appreciated, just so we don't run into a Miku-type situation from this season again. But yeah, th thanks for watching it with me, thanks for watching this far and that kind of thing. Just my show stuff one more time. If you like the video, consider liking the video. If you like the video and want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I could do to improve my presentation, comment below. I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter if you'd like me to follow you back. And the Discord, join the Discord, talk about Symphogear, Gear, give me info, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, G was very enjoyable and looking forward to more in the future. We're, we're not even halfway there, baby. And that's exciting. Yeah, so catch you guys next week. Bye-bye.